In our presentation today, we will look at key issues for this year, including the various dates and deadlines involved in applications. We look at what's involved in, CEO, in the CAO application process, the point system, and how to deal with offers within the CAO system. We look at the cost of living away from home and living at home while attending college. We'll explore the various student supports that are available, uh, grants, access schemes, scholarships, uh, and the disability schemes that are in place. We'll also look at some non-CAO routes, um, for example, FETAC progression schemes. Uh, and then we'll uh, finally introduce you to a series of websites that will help you to explore some of the areas for yourself. So what are the options for our students after they leave school? Generally speaking, we look at higher education. So college is offering courses at level six, seven and eight. We look at the application process that's involved in making an application to the CEO, which is then transferred to the colleges who make offers back to the students through the CEO. Uh, we mention applications to colleges in the UK and also across Europe. Not everyone wants to go to college, however, and for some people, uh, the best step is to look at further education as a bridge between secondary school and college or university. Uh, within that group, some students will want to make uh, that progression on to third level. Uh, others will be quite happy to take their training uh, at further education level and then move into the workforce. So we look at colleges offering post leaving cert courses or PLC courses. We'll also look at what levels those courses are at, are they level five or level six? And we look at how to make applications to those colleges. Students at Leaving Cert will be familiar with talking about different course levels. Um, but for parents, it's perhaps useful to look at the National Framework for Qualifications. So looking at this arc, we can broadly say that at the junior cert level, we're dealing with level three. And at Leaving Cert, both pass and honours level, we're dealing with level four and five. Now, as we move to a PLC course or a post Leaving Cert course, that bridge takes the students from level five uh, to equivalent courses in level five and then to level six courses. So PLC courses tend to be level five and level six. As we move into third level and away from further education, we look at level six courses, which would be uh, higher certificates. We look at level seven, which would be ordinary bachelor's degrees and level eight, which would be uh, honours bachelor degrees or higher level degrees. Level nine tends to be uh, postgraduate qualifications at master's and postgraduate diplomas, and level 10 then would be doctorates. So generally speaking, we're looking at uh, post leaving cert, we're looking at level five and six in PLC courses, and we're looking at levels six, seven, and eight at third level for higher certificates, uh, ordinary level degrees, and uh, honours degrees. That's important to keep in mind as we go through the presentation, talking about different courses at different levels. So in this slide, let's look at some important dates. The British equivalent of the CEO is called the UK system, and it opened on the 8th of September of this year. The earliest closing date for courses there is the 15th of October, and that involves deadlines for medicine, dentistry, and veterinary medicine and also for colleges such as Oxford and Cambridge. The general closing date for the UCAS application system is the 15th of January 2021, so just after Christmas. And so it's important for students who are interested in applying for the UK, um, who at this stage would have been in touch with us, um, to uh, take responsibility and to uh, fill out the form, uh, which is a quite involved form uh, for their application. That form then is processed by the guidance counsellors within the school, um, getting references and making sure that the person statements of the students are in place, and finally submitting the form to UCAS for them. The second deadline we're looking at is the 5th of November, 
And that's the opening date for CAO applications, which is the Irish College, third level college application system. And that system uh, closes uh, on the 1st of February. So there's quite a bit of time um, before the, that closing date. And uh, we'll look at that uh, shortly. The third area that our students would be interested in would be making applications to PLC colleges. And I've taken an example of Waterford College of Further Education, which is our local PLC college, and I've put it on the brochure. Um, Waterford College of Further Education tend to open their applications uh, around December, January, and they then have a series of interviews based on those applications and they make provisional offers to students uh, on condition um, that they fulf fulfill certain uh, entry requirements in their actual Leaving Cert and Leaving Cert applied. So uh, parents and students need to be uh, watching the PLC website for Waterford College of Further Education or other PLC courses for that matter, so as to get the application in on time. Um, both their guidance counsellors will be watching that uh, and will be flagging it for them uh, as it happens. Now let's look at some of the anticipated dates for the state exams and assessments and for some of our in-house assessments. The first perhaps big exam that the girls will be involved in uh, will be the pre-exams. And while our start date is not yet confirmed, we do know that those exams will finish on the 12th of February 2021. So um, students can anticipate uh, um, a schedule working back from that date and um, fairly shortly we'll be in a position to confirm uh, the start date for those exams. Now, generally uh, in March and April, um, based on previous history, we would have the practical exams and practical subjects, and we'd also have the oral exams in the languages. And that hasn't been confirmed yet as a date, but we can reasonably expect that it would happen in March and April. And finally, uh, the Leaving Cert itself, uh, the, the, the uh, first date for that has been set, and that date is Wednesday, the 9th of June 2021. So this summer on the 9th of June is the proposed start date. So let's look at some more dates for your diary. In this case, we're looking at here the Higher Education Access Routes application, that's the National Access application process and also the DARE application process which is the Dis disability access routes to education again another national uh, application process. The first date involved in this process is the 11th of January and that's an here and DARE application information evening uh, or application days um, which will be flagged for parents uh, so as to help them to become more informed of what's involved in the application process. So it's important to um, mark those dates and to be ready for them and to be in a position to log in to those conversations which are there to help you and support you in helping your daughter to make an application for either here or there. The next date of significance is the closing date for the CEO and uh, that's the 1st of February. So students need to have some courses on their form at that point. They may not be their final section, but having courses on the form at that stage helps to concentrate the mind. Um, it helps them to begin to think about the reality of what it might mean to be on a course like that next year. And that uh, ongoing process of reflection uh, continues until the change of mind opens at the beginning of May and they're in a position to change those courses um, as many times as they like up to the beginning of July for free. So the 1st of February. The 1st of March then is the final date for completion of the here and there application forms, which are part of the CEO application process. Finally, uh, on the 15th of March, students need to have had their documentation submitted to the CEO in order to be considered for the application process for here and there. If that documentation doesn't reach the CEO before the 15th of March, 
their application will be deemed to be null and void. Uh, and uh, realistically appealing, uh, it won't be successful because they haven't met the deadline. So the deadline is sacrosanct in this situation, and they're expected to meet those deadlines. They're expected to have their documentation in place. And this is where you as a parent play an important role in discovering what documentation you need to have in place, in applying for it now, while there's plenty of time, so as to have it in place and to remove any type of stress that may um, emerge if that documentation isn't available to the students uh, on time for their application to take place. So some very important work for parents here. So you've heard me mention the HERE scheme, the Higher Education Access Routes to Education scheme, a number of times so far in this presentation. So what is the HERE scheme? Well, the HERE scheme is a support scheme for students applying to third level education um, who would have the motivation and the ability to attend third level, but may lack some of the social or economic supports for various reasons. So who is eligible to apply? Um, the, the students or children of those who are long-term unemployed, um, those uh, students coming from families with low income, uh, so therefore they must be within the Irish grant income threshold limits. Families uh, who have a very little tradition of progression to third level are also uh, within the target group and uh, socioeconomic groups who are underrepresented uh, in third level are also within the target group. Many of the colleges that our girls would be interested in, in applying to are within the HERE scheme. So you can see above a number of the colleges that are involved. Um, it's worth considering that uh, students who apply and who are accepted onto the scheme uh, get very valuable supports. Um, this can vary across different colleges, but generally speaking, um, the financial support is in the region of a thousand euros a year. Um, they're taken onto the course and given an orientation program. This orientation program is crucial because uh, it's, it involves compulsory attendance at orientation um, so as to be confirmed on the access program. And student spaces can be withdrawn if they don't attend the orientation program. So that's very important. The students haven't planned uh, holidays or celebrations at a time when that orientation program might be taking place. Students are also supported with personal guidance and academic and social supports, uh, and they have access to additional extra tuition. Now, uh, while students become very enthusiastic about this uh, and about the fact that they get a discount on their points, they do have to get in excess of 90% of the required points uh, in order to take on the course. So, what eventually happens is that students apply to the CEO. If they're accepted onto the HERE scheme, they then compete for a series of course places which are ring-fenced for HERE applicants, and in the same way for DARE applicants. So they're in a restricted pool within the general CEO system. And so that's a competitive process. So the highest qualified candidates who are applying through HERE for those spaces, will get those spaces. So there's no sense in which, because a, a discount is given, that we can be complacent about the results of the leaving cert. It is still a competitive process within the access scheme. Now, in applying for this scheme, it's crucial that the correct steps are taken, as I've already suggested. Um, students must have applied by the 1st of February uh, on the drop down menu on the CEO for here or there. They must have their financial documentation in place, ready to go, and have the form completed by the 1st of March. And that documentation then must reach the CEO before the 15th of March. In fact, we like to say to the students that there's actually one date, and that date is the 1st of March. So if you think in terms of having uh, the form completed by the 1st of February and the documentation gone by the 1st of March, then we should be in a, 
a fairly secure situation to say that students have done their part of the application process. And then that documentation uh, will be assessed uh, for suitability uh, and students will be informed then as to whether they have been successful in applying on to, to get on to the here or there scheme. Okay, so I've laid out the exact timeline over the next couple of slides for what's involved in an application for here. And in fact, it's the same timeline for there. So from the beginning of November, in fact, our girls already have the CEO handbooks, which are also available to you online. So they get those handbooks and they have them available to them from the beginning of November. The CEO system opens on the 5th of November. Um, Parents are advised to review the HERE handbook, which is available online, to guide their daughters in making a CEO application between the November and the 1st of February period, to fill in the HERE application form on the CEO form, to set about gathering the, your supporting documentation so as to have that in place, um, remembering that this can take several weeks uh, to issue and so it's not something that should be left to the last minute. And to finally make sure to apply to the CEO before the 17-15 deadline on the 1st of February. The 1st of March then is the deadline for completing the here and there application forms in the online CEO form and to have uh, gathered all the supporting documentation so as to send off to support your application. Remembering that is the 15th of March deadline to have that documentation in, but we're saying the 1st of March. So the 1st of March is complete the form and send off the documentation. So that's part of your role as a parent. Um, the students are doing their role, uh, studying away, working hard, uh, and um, you need to be in the loop and to um, be efficient in gathering that uh, documentation for them so as to have it ready for their application. So the next part of this process, as we've already said, is that by the 15th of March, the documentation needs to be in the CEO offices in Galway so as to be considered a legitimate application. Now, in submitting this documentation, you have to remember that you're asked to send copies of the documentation, not the originals, and that you're asked to keep all of the originals so as you have them for reference purposes. Make sure that the copies you make are clear and easy to read. Um, make sure that you number each page and write your CEO application number and the date on the front of each page. This will prove that if a sheet is lost in the application process and um, because they're numbered sequentially, um, that that page was included. It's not possible to fax or email documents. They need to be copied, clearly uh, filed and posted to the CAO. It is most advisable to get a certificate of post from on post every time you post supporting documentation to the CEO so that uh, you have a record of postage. And in order to get confirmation that the documents you posted right in the CEO, it is also advisable to enclose within your uh, documentation a stamped self address postcard with details of the documentation you have submitted so that that can be sent back to you by the CEO. In April and June, all of the assessments for both here and there are, are reviewed uh, and assessed for suitability. And students are notified in late June. The reason for that date is that so that they're notified after the, the Leaving Cert has been completed. No one wants to get news of an unsuccessful application during the Leaving Cert. So um, this system has anticipated that and the outcome of the application uh, arrives in late June. Now, very shortly after the release of the information in relation to the success or uh, failure of the application, uh, a review and appeal application uh, process opens up. Uh, so that's the end of June, the beginning of July. The window for that is quite narrow and parents and students need to be aware of that. 
um, because generally speaking, term is out at that point, and uh, it's um, it's over to you as parents uh, to make sure that the um, appeal goes in and goes in on time. If you need support in that, uh, you, the guidance counsellors are contactable through the school. Um, if you have any queries at that point in time, but hopefully we won't be in a situation where it'll be necessary to make appeals. Then uh, July is generally quiet time and then we come to August and if we have a traditional uh, August in terms of leaving certs uh, results and uh, CEO offers, uh, it should run like early, early uh, August um, results are available. Um, CEO offers then are made generally a week after the leaving cert results. Um, successful here applicants will be notified by letter that they've been offered a here place. Uh, and um, they'll also get an offer from the CEO, which must be accepted fairly promptly. Uh, and uh, they also have to accept here offers uh, of extra college support as part of this process. And an important part of accepting that uh, offer of extra college support is uh, the understanding that it is mandatory to attend the here and there orientation programs offered by the various colleges uh, and the very severe uh, implications um, that can be attached to not attending those uh, orientation programs. So uh, we've seen situations where uh, students um, have gone to their DEBs uh, the night before the orientation program, uh, um, but were in their seat in UCC or other colleges the following morning by half nine so as to um, attend the course. Um, this is how strict the colleges take the orientation program. They want to support the students uh, so they have to have the students there. So I've mentioned there a number of times and said that it has a parallel application process to here. But specifically then, let's look at DARE for a moment. And DARE is the Disability Access Route to Education. Again, a hugely valuable access program. Um, it's part of the supplementary CEO application process. Uh, who's targeted? Well, it's, the scheme is intended to support students with a diagnosed disability. Um, disabilities such as uh, Asperger's Syndrome, Autism, ADD, ADHD, um, students who are blind or have visual impairment, uh, students with dyspraxia, mental health conditions, neurological conditions, significant ongoing illnesses, um, physical disabilities, specific learning difficulties, uh, and others which are certified by consultants. So the, a long list, um, and there's an awful lot more detail in the their documentation, which is available uh, on access uh, websites. The process of applying is also a more involved one than the um, here application process, which tends to look for income forms uh, and details like that. Uh, whereas here, there's a more detailed uh, a form that has to come from the student. And there's also a detailed form that has to come from the school. So this application takes a lot of time um, and it is targeted very specific, uh, um, um, I suppose, disabilities. Uh, and challenges that students may have. So um, not everyone uh, is suitable to apply through this route. Um, most colleges uh, subscribe to the DARE scheme. WIT has recently joined it, which is a great addition for, for students. Um, uh, and, um, and so we'll talk a little bit more in the next slide about this as well. So just in the case of the HERE process, uh, the DARE process also uh, gives applicants, successful applicants, uh, a reduction of points uh, for the courses they are applying for and also gives them uh, quite a lot of support in dealing with their disabilities while in college. Once again, the application date is the 1st of February to complete, uh, to start the form and have it fully completed by the 1st of March. Uh, and we would prefer that all documentation would be lodged with the CEO by the 1st of March. Uh, so as to be there in plenty of time for the final date, which is the 15th of March. Now, as I said, this is an involved process. Um, it takes some time. It has to be gotten right. Um, there isn't any room for error in it um, because of the detail on the form. 
And so it's important that your daughters uh, contact their guidance counsellors uh, for details as um, we want to do the best for the girls in this application process. Now, we've already screened um, most of the students uh, who've come to us for their first careers appointment and um, so as to be aware of who's uh, within that likely target group for applying for DARE. From your point of view, um, I put in a link at the bottom of this slide, um, which you can click um, before you move on to the next slide, which allows you to uh, go to accesscollege.ie, where you can locate all of the relevant documentation in relation to any of these applications. So what we see here is a list of the participating institutions in the DARE scheme. Um, it gives us the name of the institution, the websites of the institution, and the email for the DARE office in each of the institutions. So um, useful reference uh, for your files. So looking at the timeline of events for the CAO application process, uh, we've already covered most of these, so I'll just move quickly across them. The 5th of November is the opening of the CAO application season. The 20th of January, we all like a bar bargain, particularly after Christmas, uh, is the date for the discounted application fee of 30 euro. Um, so you save a few bob on that. So I always recommend to the girls and make the application, get a number in the system. You can add some courses later on, but if you have your number in the system, you get the uh, discount price if you apply before the 20th of January. Uh, the 1st of February is the normal application closing date. Um, at the 5th of February is the online facility to change or amend course choices. Uh, and um, We'd also say to the girls that uh, if you leave something out or you forget something, the CEO considers you to be a young adult applying to go to college. So when you make a mistake, it costs you. So every time you need to change something outside of the um, uh, free time after the beginning of May until the 1st of, August, 1st of July, um, they charge you. And so um, it's important to get things right. And it's also an awful lot cheaper. So before the 15th of February, uh, the CEO will send um, a copy of uh, a statement of course choices out to students, and they should be watching for that. Um, other dates, the HPAD assessment date tends to come up there around the 22nd of February, and the 1st of March is the closing date for uh, amending of course choices, um, and also the uh, final date for the completion of the online here and their forms. Continuing on, the 5th of March is the late application facility opening up there. Um, the 15th of March is the latest date for here and there supporting documentation. All goes quiet then, and the 1st of May is the closing date for late applications. And the 5th of May is the online change of mind facility becoming available. Now, this means that students who um, made their course selections up to and before the 1st of February are now in a position from the 5th of May down to the 1st of July um, to change their course choices and the order of those choices as many times as they like without incurring any fee. So it's, um, it's a very useful facility and it also means that the time from the 1st of February down to the 5th of May um, has been a time of reflection. Um, the students have had time to think about and explore a little bit more after their pre's um, the particular courses that they initially thought they would like to be uh, applying for uh, and now they're usually in a better position uh, to um, amend those selections and that goes up to the 1st of July which takes them beyond the leaving search exam period um, and while it is good to finalize those choices um, by the 1st of July, it's not always uh, a good idea to react to what you thought was uh, a good or a bad um, performance in the exams because your perception of how you did may be, uh, um, I suppose, distorted or coloured by emotion at the time. And uh, you may in fact have done an awful lot better than you realise. Um, and uh, if you take a course off the form um, because you thought you did badly in an exam, 
um, when the results come out uh, and mm, perhaps you've done better than you thought you did, um, that course is no longer on the form for you to have as a choice. So it's something that students need to, um, to have a clear head and a calm head before uh, getting involved in. We do occasionally have students who want to apply to uh, the States um, for college places. Generally, students are heavily involved in sport. <clears throat> um, and as part of that process, it's important that they sit the SATs. Um, and the SATs tend to take place in Dublin. Um, the registration process is online uh, at collegeboards.org. Uh, and I've included a link there for parents to take a look at this uh, um, application process, uh, even if it uh, is just a matter of curiosity. For students interested in applying to the UK, um, we've already clarified that there were no students looking to apply for the 15th of October deadline. But for students who might be still considering the 15th of January deadline, um, those students need to come to the guidance counsellor to help them set up their accounts online and to work through their sections of the application process. Um, we can give them some guidance around the writing of their personal statement and um, uh, and clarify the admissions tests that are involved for different courses that they may be applying to. So we've already looked at the National Framework of Qualifications and uh, I now want to apply this to the CEO application process. Um, there are two separate sections on the CEO form. Uh, one section gives 10 course choices for level six, seven courses. And the other section gives 10 choices for level eight courses. Um, which courses level six, seven or eight is clearly labeled within the CEO handbook and the yellow section of the of the handbook where all the courses are named and uh, their course codes are attached. What's very important here is to be aware that some of these courses are marked as restricted. Um, and that means they must be included on the CEO form by the 1st of February. And the reason that they must be included uh, and they're therefore restricted to the 1st of February as an application date is that they involve some extra assessments by the colleges um, as part of the application process. So if someone is applying for music, for example, um, they may have to go and do an audition. Um, if someone is applying for architecture or art or something like that, they may have to submit a portfolio. And uh, that process tends to take place in March and April. Um, where those application applicants are given an opportunity um, to show their giftedness uh, in their chosen areas. Um, and the courses, uh, course providers then tend to um, attach additional points to their applications. So if you see, for example, a course with uh, 780 points, uh, it's not that that's achievable directly through the Leaving Cert, it's the likely outcome of an assessment process uh, where additional points have been added onto the applications uh, of the particular candidates. So when the CEO makes an offer, they will potentially make an offer at level six, seven, and also at level eight, remembering that the students have 10 choices at level six, seven, and 10 choices at level eight. Now, working on the basis that the students have uh, included courses in strict order of preference, um, in other words, uh, their most desired course is number one, and um, the least desired of the 10 is at number 10, um, the offer that they receive should be satisfactory in that nothing below that offer is more attractive than what they've already received. However, they obviously would prefer the courses above that. Uh, and it may be possible that in a subsequent round, they could get a second or third round offer, which will uh, lift them up to the first, second or third choice that they've made. However, they are in a position to accept the first round offer and to reject subsequent round offers if they're happy uh, on mature reflection 
uh, with the place they've been offered in the first round. Students can accept their offers online. It's important that they don't allow the offer to lapse by not replying and accepting it within the timeline. Now, some very specific advice in relation to deferring a place. Um, if you wish to defer uh, an offer from a HEI, you do not accept the offer. Instead, you must email or write, preferably email because it's quicker and the timeline is very sensitive. So email uh, the admissions office of the appropriate college that has made the offer to you. You must give them your name as it appears on the CEO application. You must quote your CEO application number and the course code of the offer you wish to defer and set out the reason or reasons for the deferment. The applicant, applicants must mark the email deferred entry clearly uh, or write that on an envelope if they're posting it. Um, is so that this can be picked up very quickly. Um, you can also check uh, on the HEI's website what their policy is in relation to deferment. Um, the college will then uh, either uh, send a letter or email you um, to let you know um, uh, what their decision is. But what's very important in terms of your responsibilities is that the email must arrive at the admissions office of the institution at least, and in all likelihood, it should be earlier than two days before the reply date shown on the no offer notice. Um, the co college is then in a position to make a decision and to contact you back directly. Um, if the deferral is not granted by the college, uh, you may then accept the offer for the current year, provided that you have, um, haven't have passed the reply date. And that's why all of this is so time sensitive and that perhaps email is a better way of contacting the um, admissions office for the HEI. Um, it's very important that you send all communications about the deferral to the appropriate admissions office and not to the CEO. Sometimes people come unstuck by communicating deferrals to the CEO. No, send it to the admissions office of the relevant college. So a quick word on the point system. Um, generally in the CEO system, uh, the number of qualified applicants is greater than the number of places. Uh, and therefore, that's why we have to have a selection system. Um, the selection system used in third level colleges is the CO points system. And points are calculated from one sitting of the Leaving Cert only. The points total is calculated from the student's six best subjects, the per best performance in their six subjects, uh, which have come out as the highest results. Uh, entry requirements, which are different to points requirements, but entry requirements for colleges, such as maybe a pass in maths or a pass in English, um, can be satisfied over more than one sitting of the Leaving Cert, with some notable exceptions, such as medicine. For those of you who may not be too familiar with the point system, I've included a slide with um, the relevant points associated with the relevant grades. Um, those points are not moving in exactly the same increments uh, from one grade to another. And the reason for that is to try and avoid situations um, where students are selected for courses on third level uh, colleges uh, by random selection. So random selection is a situation where um, if there are more students uh, equally qualified for the last number of places on the course, um, then there are places available, uh, random selection applied. So there is effectively a lottery taking place. Um, so random numbers are assigned to each course choice for e each student before uh, the application process kicks off. Um, and when a decision has to be made in relation to who gets the final places on the course, the CEO will go to the uh, candidates with the highest random numbers which have been uh, set before the application process has started. So it's completely fair uh, insofar as uh, um, and no one wants to be in a random selection situation but uh, given that um, it may happen uh, even with the point system trying to help avoid that situation um, this seems to be the fairest way for it to, to take place.
So there is a random selection process and that's limited by the changing in the, the, in the points. Now, if you want to sit down with your daughter and uh, work out the points that they may be anticipating or after their um, mocks, uh, I've in, uh, included a link to the points calculator uh, on Careers Portal. Um, you'll also notice that the points are calculated from the six best scores uh, in the exams and that uh, students uh, get bonus points for grades above H6 uh, in maths, honours maths. One of the important things to be aware of uh, in applying for courses is uh, not alone do you have to achieve the required points level, but you also need to, to achieve the basic matriculation requirements or what we might call course requirements. Um, so matriculation requirements are the basic requirements to enter the college. So if you think of in terms of um, matriculation require, uh, requirements get you into the gate of the college, course requirements get you into the course building, and CAO points get you a seat on the course. All of those uh, hurdles have to be overcome before you have a successful application. So for example, uh, if you were applying for primary school teaching, you have to achieve a certain grade in Honours Irish. That's a course requirement. Um, if you want to go to an NUI college, um, you have to get two H5s and four O3s or uh, O6s or H7s. So um, these worms are laid out in the form here on the slide. Um, and because of this, we're very careful about changes in levels. Um, for students and students at senior level must come and talk to the guidance counsellors uh, in advance of making a decision uh, to change from one level in a subject to another. I've included now uh, some details in relation to the cost of living away from home. <clears throat> if you're living at home, it's pretty much the same uh, as it would have been in terms of accommodation costs and bills but uh, there may be additional costs for books and class materials, for travel that may be involved in relation to the course, uh, and for the inevitable uh, student social life, or perhaps the student charge, if it's not covered by the grant for you. However, when you move away from home, you incur accommodation costs and uh, greater travel costs, which are associated with moving from home to the college and back. So this particular form here uh, is an estimation for 2018-19 of the cost of living away from home. Um, my experience would be that this is actually quite conservative and that um, uh, the cost can be greater. Uh, this is it broken down um, on a monthly basis uh, and you can see that the monthly uh, living at home uh, whereas living away from home uh, is quite different. Um, my experience is that um, having uh, a daughter in third level is that uh, it's actually quite a lot more expensive, particularly if you go to Dublin. So uh, accommodation costs can be in the region of 9,000 in Dublin, um, college fees in the region of uh, 3,000, that's the student registration charge. Um, living costs uh, at 80 euros a week to include transport uh, to and from college. Um, uh, um, buying of food and uh, social life uh, all within the 80 euro mark. I know a lot of students would probably look at that and wonder, is that realistic? But um, you have to realize what's realistic from both a parent's point of view and a student's point of view. And some setup costs, if they have to get a laptop uh, or a printer or something like that, um, that setup cost isn't necessarily a recurring cost. Uh, the cost of their phone credit, um, the uh, books and medical, uh, and the travel costs there again if they have to do some course related travel in particular if they're on placement. So that suddenly jumps uh, to quite a substantial figure uh, and uh, would necessitate uh, parents putting away the children's allowance for an extended period of time and also hopefully uh, having access to the third level grants scheme. Uh, another thing that's worth looking at in relation to uh, applying to third level is um, that while that accommodation is very expensive, curiously enough, it tends to fill up very quickly. And so it's important for parents to be watching the college and private websites associated with accommodation 
uh, for the college that your daughter is hoping to attend. The applications for those, for those, those uh, accommodations uh, tend to open uh, and close very quickly because they get filled up. Uh, and now some of the colleges have moved to a lottery system, uh, where, which tends to be in uh, February, March uh, of uh, the year of application. Uh, the students can apply for inclusion in the lottery system and then they get the outcome of the lottery system. The problem with it is that you, while you're waiting for the lottery to take place, the private accommodation, uh, which uh, may be a, a little bit more expensive um, than the college accommodation, all fills up because people aren't prepared to take the chance on the lottery. So you have to hedge your, hedge your bets on that and uh, do your best to secure accommodation uh, for um, your intended student um, for the next year. So hopefully uh, your daughter has gotten a place now and uh, you've suddenly uh, awoken to the cost implications of that uh, place that she's uh, so worthy to have received. Um, so are there any financial supports available? And the answer is yes. Um, the access schemes make some money available um, for here candidates. Um, the SUSE Grants Scheme uh, we'll take a look at, uh, and the Student Assistance Fund, which is administered by the colleges, and various scholarships uh, which are available for students should they apply. And there are some other funds and student loans, of course, um, that can be applied for. So let's take a look at some of those now. For our students, um, WIT uh, offers the REACH Access Programme uh, and uh, offers great support to the girls uh, who qualify. Um, they're obviously just like the HEAR scheme, which it mirrors. Um, there are our application criteria uh, and they're laid out there in bullet points. Uh, I won't go through them all, um, but you can read through them and I've given links to, this, um, to these sites. Um, so that you can take a look at it slowly yourself. So um, obviously, and this is one of the ones where girls curiously uh, have fallen down at the first step, um, they want to make a REACH application, but they don't include a course in WIT uh, on their CEO form by the 1st of February, and that's the application gone, because you can't apply for an access place for a course in a college that you haven't applied for. So you would think that that uh, was fairly uh, logical uh, that you would apply. But oftentimes uh, students uh, um, put down maybe um, a sample course on the form for the 1st of February and intend to uh, amend it uh, once the change of mind opens. And they neglect uh, to uh, remember um, that if you're applying for an access place, you must have courses in the college where the access place um, is available. Uh, and that needs to be on by the 1st of February. So that's that piece there, um, uh, applying for the REACH application. And they all come through the guidance counselors in the school. Um, uh, we uh, provide the link to the student. Um, we uh, keep an eye on their application. Then we have to support their application and we submit the application. So uh, um, they're not on their own in that uh, and um, they work with us uh, on an appointment basis to fill in that form. Um, the next step for accessing funding is, is that um, the REACH scheme candidates would be expected to be able to make an application for um, the student grant scheme, um, that they would be eligible for that free fees initiative um, and perhaps that they would have a medical card as well. Uh, and that they must be a student attending one of the secondary schools uh, in the southeast, which are considered REACH eligible schools. So a number of criteria um, that students have to fulfill before they qualify for the REACH scheme. Um, and um, from those uh, qualified Waterford uh, Institute of Technology, select the successful candidates based on their application and their school references. So um, uh, you can see that, uh, again, there is a process involved here. Now, you may not qualify for um, the REACH scheme uh, or the HEAR scheme, but that doesn't mean that you won't be entitled to apply for the student grant scheme, which is administered through SUSE, um, the Student Universal Supports Ireland uh, platform. 
So I've included a couple of links here, the grant information link, uh, which explains how the grant process works, and very importantly, the grant threshold and rates link. So that's um, what the income thresholds are um, and what rates are associated, what rates of grants are associated with those income thresholds. Um, now, while the student grant scheme is the main financial support scheme for students, um, uh, there are uh, other schemes such as the student assistance funds, which we'll look at in a minute. There is the fund for students with disability. There is the 1916 bursary fund, uh, which is applied for once the students are registered in the college. Uh, and there are other bursaries and scholarships that students can apply for as well. Um, a lot of this information can be gotten by following the link to studentfinance.ie uh, and um, take a bit of time to read through it and uh, to make your plans for the applications you hope to make. Um, if we can be of any help, um, drop us an email to our school emails, the girls will provide them for you and um, we can have a chat with you to advise you. Now, here's a selection of some of the other financial bursaries and scholarships that are available. There are some for deaf schools available through the Department of Education. Um, there are some scholarships for students with disability, the Vincent de Paul, uh, and uh, can also provide education and training uh, bursary funds. Um, there are uh, funds available through the Irish Refugee Education Fund for people who have arrived into um, in, into our the Irish education system as refugees. Um, there's the North South Postgraduate Scholarship Scheme if the girls go on to postgrad level. Um, there's the Norton Scholarship for people who are interested in science and technology. A uh, very good scholarship to get and uh, very prestigious. Um, the Irish Taxa Taxation Institute Third Level Scholarship Programme, the Credit Union Member Scholarship uh, Scheme, which is worth looking into for people who are members of the Credit Union, um, the National University of Ireland Awards, um, Awarding Excellence, um, the SIP2 Education and Development Support Scheme, and uh, some of the financial institutions and are obviously offering student grants uh, there. So there is a link there again for you to follow, um, which you can click and um, get some more information in relation to um, one particular scheme that's worth applying for, uh, and we've had uh, fantastic success with our students, is the WIT President Scholarship Programme, uh, where we have a great tradition, and uh, uh, we have two of our three uh, students pictured here on the slide, um, those being Dominica, uh, who was awarded a President Scholarship in 2018 for Architecture, Rebecca, who was awarded a President Scholarship for Computer Science in 2019, uh, and Grace, who will be uh, awarded uh, her present scholarship when uh, um, and the award ceremony comes this year, because she was awarded it in June, uh, for engineering. So um, great credit to the girls for um, very, very high levels of achievements. Uh, and um, it also sets the uh, potential for uh, this year's Leave Inserts to apply um, to see if they could uh, achieve uh, success in the President's Award Scholarship, which we're very grateful to WIT. Um, it has made such a difference to uh, three of our students and the um, scholarship is worth up to 12,000 uh, euros over their time in the college, um, 2,000 per year of study plus um, 500 per semester on a student card um, for buying books and food and things like that on campus. So um, a great opportunity, something that should be considered and speak to your guidance counsellor in relation to that. So further in relation to um, financial support, um, students who are in college and who are experiencing uh, financial difficulties in relation to uh, maintaining themselves while in college can apply for support to the Students Assistance Fund. Um, so this is a fund that's available through the college um, to support students in relation to books and class materials, rent or utility bills, food, essential travel, uh, childcare costs uh, and medical costs. Um, students need to be aware of this. They are made aware of it through the school and um, they need to access this support while they're in college should they need it.
So uh, in summary, um, we encourage students to look at all these schemes uh, and to put the time in and effort uh, to applying if they are eligible, because they can make a significant difference um, to the cost of third level education. For students uh, um, applying for here and there, um, we've gone into quite a, a lot of detail in terms of completing those forms um, and they will have the support of the student, of the guidance counsellors and the school to do that. Um, the students in the end send the forms away, not the school, and so it is important that you as parents uh, are fully engaged with your daughters uh, in the application process. Again, um, the REACH forms for WIT will be completed between January and March, and those forms are sent off by the guidance counsellors in this instance, and um, it, which includes a reference from the school. Um, completed REACH forms um, need to be forwarded to your guidance counsellors so that this can take place. Scholarship applications are usually returned to the college or institution, uh, are the awarding body and uh, so uh, all of these uh, will be flagged on the guidance notice board and on the guidance website which is uh, attached to the uh, school website. Um, so worth having a look at those from time to time. Um, the grant forms are completed um, uh, from generally April across the summer uh, online and supporting documentation is then returned to SUSE for assessment. Um, should your circumstances change between the point at which you apply um, and uh, college beginning or even after they've begun college, um, you can reapply um, for reconsideration based on change of circumstances. And uh, uh, students should be in contact with their guidance counsellor in relation to any queries that they have. And indeed, as parents, um, we're very happy um, to support you and to answer any of your queries or to direct you in the way of information that you may need um, should you send us an email uh, or give us a quick call. We spent quite a bit of time talking about applications to third level and um, that's because that application process is quite an involved process. But not all students want to make the immediate step to third level and many students look at making an application to a college for further education, such as <clears throat> Waterford College of Further Education. So let's take a look for a minute about what's involved here and um, how they might make that application. So one of the uh, pathways to progression <clears throat> at the third level is through the Leaving Search. Uh, another is for students who are over 23 who make a mature applicant application. Um, but the third way uh, and a very successful way in recent years of um, applying it to go to third level is through what's known as the FETA QQI links scheme. So we're going to talk about that for a minute or two here and explain what happens. Now, the students uh, apply to the third level, um, uh, directly to the CEO, but they also come in from uh, PLC courses or FETAC courses. In uh, 2017, there were 38 HEIs offering places to FETAC applicants, and currently 20% of the CEO applicants have the level 5-6 um, FETAC awardees on their, um, on their courses. Now, um, what's typical then is of the pathway that a student um, uh, such as your daughter might end up uh, moving through in order to move to the third level from PLC course? Well, um, uh, she would do her Leaving Cert or her Leaving Cert applied. She'd make an application to a PLC course such as Waterford College of Further Education. Um, she would be interviewed for the course. Um, based on her interview, she would be made a provisional offer. Now, provisional offer means that they um, they actually offer her a place, um, but they have the condition that she must achieve certain minimum standards um, in her final exams in order to be admitted to the course. Um, and generally, uh, the students uh, who are applying uh, are very confident in achieving those results. Um, they've worked hard, they've made every effort, and um, it would be rare enough that they wouldn't achieve what was required. Um, 
So then they make that uh, transition from a leave insert into a PLC course. They do their PLC course and um, yeah, in our experience, students uh, perform very well in those courses, having been well prepared in second level. So uh, they then uh, receive their maximum credits while they're on the course, which would be um, 120 uh, credits, uh, converting to 390 points on the CEO. Um, they then apply uh, from their course to the courses uh, they're linked with. Um, so there are specifically linked courses uh, in colleges um, with courses on PLCs. Um, we've explained that to the girls in terms of uh, when they do a PLC course, they must check that the course code for the PLC course is uh, recognized and accepted by the uh, IT or the university um, for progression uh, once they finish the course. And I've included the link here so that you can take a look at that um, as an example from WIT. So their progression scheme and the links that exist. Uh, if you have any questions about that, you can give us a shout. Now, once again, not every student is applying through the CEO. Um, some may apply to private colleges. Um, be careful of the fees involved there. Um, uh, some people uh, want to uh, take a training course, and so they apply to Solus, uh, formerly known as FOSS, um, which they apply to directly after the Leaving Cert, uh, and they go on a training program, and they receive an allowance while they're on the training program, uh, and um, they get a lot of work experience while they're on that as well. Um, and, and so that that particular approach to uh, follow on education from the Leaving Cert is targeted at moving reasonably quickly into the workforce. Um, there are also uh, internship schemes which are available directly through FOSS. Um, there are apprenticeships which are now uh, offered in conjunction with uh, colleges for their education uh, and uh, as well as, um, and so students have great opportunities. Um, there is obviously the opportunity to get a job um, uh, and to perhaps maybe take a gap year uh, if you have the luxury of being able to do that. Um, not so much travel going on this year, uh, there was in previous years, um, saving the turtles or whatever you choose to save. Um, but uh, th then for some, there's the possibility of, of a repeat uh, if they haven't achieved what they wanted to achieve and they believe it doesn't represent their best efforts. Um, that could be because of health matters of that, but uh, hopefully uh, that won't be necessary. Um, but in the scale of things, uh, a one year repeat to achieve what you really want in the scale of a lifetime is very a very uh, um, a small adjustment. So um, for options, I would suggest checking into Qualifax uh, and checking into Careers Portal. The girls will be able to take you through that. In our experience, uh, parents who chat to their daughters and who explore possible plans and courses with them uh, get better outcomes. Um, it's important that you have a, a healthy interest uh, in the work they're involved in so that you can support them and a healthy interest in their future plans. It's important that there is a synergy between um, their hopes and dreams uh, and your uh, expectations as well. Um, it's, um, it's never a happy situation when a student has worked very, very hard uh, to pursue their dreams. And um, it's um, a late conversation with a parent to tell them um, that that's not going to work out uh, because of financial reasons uh, or because plans haven't been put in place. So always best to have these conversations early so that everybody is on the same pitch in terms of expectations. Um, the girls also appreciate the fact that the parents are there to support them, uh, to listen to them. Sometimes it's making a cup of tea, and um, sometimes it's having a chat, sometimes it's providing a few tissues uh, and um, a supportive shoulder. Um, but uh, they all move through these uh, challenging phases uh, with your support and with support of ourselves in the school. If we can be of any help in terms of supporting the girls, um, please do not hesitate to contact us. Um, that's what we're here for. 
We've also included a series of websites uh, such as Qualifax Careers Portal, Student Finance. I've gathered them all together here at this point. Just to save you going back through the presentation, those are all active links and you can click on them. They bring you to the relevant websites. And here are some more. Um, and uh, at this point, um, we're just about to sign off. And I'd like to thank you for watching the presentation. I hope it's been useful. Uh, at least maybe it may start some conversations for you at home. Uh, it'll also serve as a, um, uh, a springboard uh, for references, uh, which you may find useful. And um, once again, um, should you need any support or advice, or even if you just want to bounce something off for one of us, uh, give us a shout. Um, we're always happy to help. And um, we can make this journey uh, together um, a more uh, successful and supported one for your daughters who are our students. Thank you very much.